Okay, Shalom Aleichem, this is the Beam and Shell 89. In this video, um, we will be discussing a text uh, that results into, uh, well, to lead to say, my normal Aramaic primacy. I call this a Semitic primacy text, actually. Um, the title of the slide is Eyes of the Heart, because I'll just go in it. In Ephesians 1.18, we read, The eyes of your understanding in the Greek, the Stephanus' 1550 Greek New Testament, it reads, Aftalmos tes dianios. Sorry, uh, hold on. Come on. Sorry for those who, if I mispronounce the word there. But oh, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened for your knowing what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance? Compared to, may the eyes of your heart, hot, I'm sorry, of thalamos, taste cardias, human. The eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? So which one is it? Is Paul appealing to the heart? Like the Nessa Island, the UBS, and the Byzantine majority text tells us? Or did he appeal to the understanding of man? Like the text of Receptus tells us. If you do notice, they noted that the word for heart, cardia, and the word for understanding are two completely different words. They don't even sound the same, much less look the same. The, the, the answer really lies in the Aramaic text of this verse, where it says, and that, um, and that the eyes of your understanding, an ne, the live, Hold on, sorry. The lib bawat kun may be enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints. See the word on ne the lib bawat kun means eyes of his heart, which is why you see a picture of a heart with eyes to the right. <laughs> But it comes from the word which of his heart, uh, sorry, not his heart, but of your heart. Uh, the word for of your heart, the root is lab, lamed beit, or lev in Hebrew. Same spelling, in three letter root, it's levav. It means heart. You know, yes, the organ, concretely, the organ that pumps blood that goes to your brain and makes you live. But idiomatically, it has the mind of it had the meaning of understanding so what did the heart have to do with understanding well unlike in the west where the heart is the seat of emotion where we demonstrate every valentine or any gift card you send to your loved one you tell them you love them by drawing a heart or something and you give them a chocolate, a, a, a chocolate that is in the shape of a heart. You tell them that you love them, that you're affectionate for them. Or if you've broken up or you've lost a loved one, you draw, may have draw a picture with the heart that is rent and torn that says that your emotions have been trampled on, that you're depressed. I, we call it a broken heart. Unlike that, in the West, where the heart is the seat of emotions like love and anger. In the East, the heart is the seat of intellect and reason. It is in the heart that a man contemplates a matter, that he decides what is the right, what is the wrong or right way to go to, uh, to decide to judge a fellow man. You do so with your heart. You think out and you contemplate and whether he's innocent or guilty. For example, in Job 34, 34, let men, of under, let men of understanding tell me, and let the wise man hearken unto me. In the Hebrew, Levav, 
Lamed Beit Beit, a heart, let men of heart tell me, and let wise men hearken unto me. How do we know that heart, Levav, should be understanding? Because it's comparing to wise men. The men of heart is paralleled with wise men hearkening unto you. Ezekiel 38.10, Thus saith Adonai, Yehovah, it shall come to pass that at the time at the same time shall fame come into thy mind and Hebrew shall come into your heart and thou shalt think an evil thought again God here through Ezekiel compares things entering into your mind to what evil thoughts evil thoughts enter into your heart I thought you thought with your mind in Job 12, 3, but I have understanding. In Hebrew, I have heart as well as you. Do you think I have an emotion? I have affections as well as you? Let's see. I am an inferior to you. Yea, who knoweth not such thing as these? Hmm. Job tells it, it compares him having a heart. It parallel to knowing something. Having, knowing something, knowledge is having understanding. Isaiah 65, 17, For behold, I create new heaven and new earth, and the former shall not be what? Remembered, nor come into mind. In Hebrew, heart. Lev. So, nothing, the former thing will not come into mind. You shall not remember them with your mind, with your heart. You shall not contemplate on them. Within the Peshitta, with the Peshitta, did Zorba have a heart? This is the question. With the Peshitta reading, Ane de la Bawatkon, Zorba had two choices. Sorry, I meant to spell T-W-O, I misspelled. But oh, he had two choices to make. To either render it literally or idiomatically. Overall, Zorba followed the literal reading of the text and translated it, "Eyes of your heart." While the text, well, while the manuscript that underlined the text and receptus seemed to understood Aramaic and the in the idiom, and translated it as "Eyes of your understanding." Paul here is. Using the phrase eyes of your heart, the Semitic idiom, to appeal to one reasoning, understanding, the intellect. I will put into on this topic of the seat of the intellect, mind, and emotion, emotion and whatnot. I will put a link down on the bottom to um, Jeff Penner's website. Or to his bookstore where you can get his book. Uh, you can even get it on ebook. Living Words Volume 1, where he deals with this, um, by the way. So, this is a twofer here. Not only proved Peshitta to be original, where you have a variant reading based upon the Aramaic text, or something written down in Aramaic, where one misunderstands the idiom and one gets it. But you have Paul, a good Semite, um, showing his, semi, his, his Semitism here. So with that being said, Shalom Alaikum.